let's get real today. One of the biggest things standing in the way of our progress on the drums is fear of failing. We're just afraid that we're not doing things right, that we're developing bad habits that'll lead to stalling and plateauing. And so deep down inside, we're honestly not sure if we're actually capable of that success on the drums that we know we want to reach. Well, let's deal with this now and let's squelch these fears. You can master the drums. You are fully capable of mastering the drums and you'll master the drums much more quickly if you avoid these bad habits, these worst beginner mistakes that I've seen in students and that I've seen in myself and had to work to overcome. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so excited that you're hanging out with me today. I help hobby drummers and semi-pro drummers become the musicians that everybody wants to play with and everybody wants to listen to. And we do this by teaching you the core fundamental skills that get you results faster and make you a better drummer, a much better drummer in the process. And hey, speaking of faster progress and reaching your goals more quickly, how would you like a clear, reliable path that will get you from beginner to session drummer, regardless of which stage you're at right now. The thing is most drummers don't ever really find this because they don't really know what to practice or more importantly, in what order to practice things. And so they plateau, they stagnate, they stop growing. They might get to a pretty good stage, but they just kind of plateau there. I don't want that for you. I want you to grab my free guide, Six Steps to Sounding Like a Session Drummer, which outlines the six growth phases I believe every drummer goes through, from beginner all the way up to session drummer. So what you can do is you can find which stage you're in right now. You'll be able to identify that, whether you're a beginner or maybe you're somewhere in between. You're already on your way there towards session drumming. And then you can follow the action steps and know exactly what you need to practice so that you're growing day by day, week by week, and you are on the fast track to success. You're fully capable of this because mastering the drums, that's a learned skill. It doesn't just happen. You've got to know what to practice, but when you do, sky's the limit. I believe in you. You're capable of success on the drums. You can do this. Download that guide, my free gift to you. All right, on with today's lesson. You don't have to fear failure, and it's also not too late to turn around a bad habit. If you are that drummer who maybe you've been playing for a long time, and you've recently started watching these videos, these lessons, and you've started to realize, man, I'm not exactly gripping the way I should have. I've spent decades building bad habits. I want you to know it's okay. It's never too late to turn around a bad habit. I've had so many students that are even later in life, like 60s, 70s, like getting a lot older, but now they've got the time to really work at this. No better time than the present to correct old bad habits. And hey, if you are a total beginner, then awesome. You can start off on the right foot and make sure you're avoiding these bad practice habits immediately. But I, I want you to know, you don't need to fear doing things wrong. You don't need to fear failing at this because you can succeed at this when, you, when you're dedicated and when you're disciplined and you work at these things regularly. I've got so many resources for you here on the channel. But let's start today by talking about these five bad practicing habits. Really, it's these beginner mistakes that happen that'll lead to you not really growing in your practicing. That's kind of what we're getting at here. These are bad practice habits that will keep you from growing in your practicing and having efficient and productive practice sessions. This is really important if you're busy. Like if you don't have a lot of time and you need to get a lot done in 30 minute practice sessions spread throughout your week, this is definitely for you. So let's dig into the first one. Beginner mistake number one, practicing too fast. So <laughs> this, is, this is kind of a funny one because I think we all understand this. I think we all know that we need to practice things more slowly, but I think we're also all guilty of just assuming, you know, I think I've got this, you know, well enough at 60 beats a minute, let's jump up to 90. Or, you know, this is sounding fine at 100, let's go ahead and jump to 140. And so we tend to push ourselves to get faster in tempo because we believe that faster is better. And reasonably so, because when you're watching most videos of great drummers on YouTube, what's everybody doing? They're playing fast. You see so much fast stuff and flashy chops, and those are things that naturally we want to emulate because we want to feel good at what we do. But you can't get there unless you're practicing very slow and really locking in the fundamentals slowly. That's kind of the ironic thing, that you will learn faster by practicing slowly. So if you've got 30 minutes a day, spend those 30 minutes working on your slow singles, because if you're working on those slow singles, that those core grip skills that you're building right there are gonna carry over into so many things you do. Not to mention there are a lot of slow songs. You know, the drumming isn't all about playing fast because sure there are fast songs, but most songs we play are kind of in that mid-tempo range and there's a lot of ballads too. You wanna be able to play the ballads. And so that requires that very loose grip. So be patient. I think a big thing here is just 
being patient. Just to share with you a little bit of personally what I've been practicing lately. So I think the Rosanna Shuffle, Rosanna by Toto, Jeff Bercaro on drums, I think that that is one of the most difficult grooves in the world to play well. And it's because it's a combination of some things. Um, if you read into it, look, research the, the Rosanna Shuffle. If you're not already aware of, it, of the background here, the context. But Jeff Bercaro took elements from Bonham's Fool in the Rain groove and Bernard Purdy's groove from Babylon Sisters uh, by Steely Dan and kind of combined these into just this really complex, complicated shuffle groove that sounds very simple and sounds incredibly musical and cool, but there's a lot of moving parts. Anyways, I love practicing it because anytime I practice it, I just feel like I'm rapidly gaining skill across the board because it's so difficult. But what do I do? What do I have to make sure I do? I have to make sure I'm playing very slowly. So if I'm working on my, my Rosanna Shuffle, I'm not doing the exact kick pattern there, by the way. Something that I'll practice is actually doing different kick drum patterns underneath that shuffle pattern. So I might do but I have to go super slow with that. If I try to rush it, then the kick drum starts to lose its precision. It doesn't quite lock in here, and then I'm wasting my time. But if I go really slow with that, and I practice that very slowly, then I can start pushing the tempo up, and it actually feels pretty good. And even if I only practice it slowly, I find that then I can go to a rehearsal, go to a gig, and suddenly my playing feels tighter because of all that slow practice. So I want you to be patient and understanding that, knowing that slow practice is what pays off. Slow practice, spend as much time practicing slowly as you can. And sure, we wanna get faster, we wanna have tempo goals, that's fantastic, but always start slow because that's gonna lay your foundation. You can't, can't build a house on the mud, you gotta have your foundation and that slow practice is your concrete foundation. Worst beginner mistake, bad practice habit number two, practicing at only one volume. So this is something that we, maybe we don't really think about. I know I wasn't thinking about this when I was a beginner first starting out, but, <laughs> Think about this, so imagine you're walking into a music venue, so maybe it's a favorite restaurant or a club, whatever, nearby, and you go in there and there's a cover band playing, and as you walk in there, you're just immediately just hit in the face by how loud the drummer is playing. The drums are so loud, that's all you hear. Like, as you're walking in, you can tell somebody's singing something, like, is there a vocalist up there? I don't know. You're barely hearing a vocal, mostly you're just hearing cymbals and you're hearing drums. Maybe there's some bass, maybe you're feeling a little bit of bass, but you can't hear the guitar because the drums are so loud. So I think we've all been there. I think we've heard a band where the drummer is just way too loud and paying no attention. And the thing is, that's probably because that drummer has only ever practiced playing loudly. That drummer could not play softly to save his life. That's the case so many times. We just, we practice wailing away at things, which is fun. We practice playing songs loudly and rocking out because so many of the great drummers play loudly. And that's a great method, tactic, strategy for when you're recording. If you're playing a big high energy song, you've got to play loud when you record. It's going to sound the best that way, unless you're trying to intentionally play something very chill. And so we want to play loudly, and a lot of times we don't really have much constraint. We don't pay attention. So the whole, whole idea here, it is a mistake to only practice at one volume. Maybe that volume is loud. Maybe that volume is soft. My personal problem was actually that my weak volume was loud. I had a hard time playing well loudly. I could play kind of a mid volume pretty well, but if I got really loud, I got sloppy. So what I want you to do, find your weak volume. Think about, all right, in the whole range of very soft to medium to super loud, what am I most uncomfortable with? Maybe you lack the strength and the endurance in your wrists to play really loud. So maybe you need to work on that. Maybe you lack the control and precision to play very softly. Maybe when you're playing at a medium volume, your tendency is to trip over yourself and rush. I've been there. Sometimes it's hard to relax when you're playing lightly. It's too easy to go and just start speeding up instead of staying very relaxed and relaxing, relaxing your shoulders. That's something to focus on, making sure you're physically relaxed at every volume. The thing is different songs require different playing volumes and probably more importantly than that, and as applied to us as maybe gigging cover band drummers, if that's you, different venues require different volumes. And so you've got to play the right volume for that venue. Whether it's a huge building where you can play as loud as you want to, or maybe it's a tiny little room, a tiny little cafe or restaurant where you've really got to watch out. So you want to be prepared for every scenario. I want you to be that drummer who can go into any venue and that venue owner love it when your band comes because you always play for the room. 
That's the kind of compliment you want to get. I think that's the best compliment you as a drummer can get from a venue owner or a booking person there. You want them to be able to say, hey, I love having you guys because you just sound good in this room. You're the only, you're the only band that makes this lousy sound system sound good. You're the only person who, you're the only band that actually sounds good in this room because nobody sounds good in this room, but you guys do because you actually play for the room. That's the kind of compliment you want to get. Don't be that drummer whale in a way that's just making everybody's ears bleed. So whatever you're practicing, whether you're working your singles, whether you're doing singles around the kit, whether you're playing a basic groove, whether you're doing coordination exercises, anything you're practicing, do it at different dynamics. Practice it very softly, practice it loudly, and hey, just an extra tip, choose your sticks based on what volume you're playing. You know, there's no rule that, that says you gotta only ever use one pair of sticks. Uh, if you're playing really loud, I recommend five Bs. Use your 5B sticks if you're playing loudly and you're hitting rim shots. If you're playing moderately loud, I recommend 5As. Those are my go-tos. If you're playing really softly, I recommend you get 5A maple sticks. So these are all Vic Fur sticks. Vic Fur calls these the American Heritage Series. They're maple instead of hickory, so they weigh less. Same diameter, same dimensions as a 5A, but it's a lighter weight stick because it's rock maple instead of hickory. So I find that these are great for playing lightly. If you have a lighter stick, that's gonna encourage you physically to play more lightly versus if you have a heavier stick, that's gonna make it easier to play loudly. It actually won't require as much effort to hit hard if it's a heavier stick, just like how it will require, it won't require as much effort to play lightly when it's a lighter stick. So use common sense here and have a couple of pairs of sticks at your disposal so that you're ready to play whatever dynamic you need to and practice with those at home. Practice softly with the lighter sticks, louder with the more heavy, thicker sticks. Okay, bad practice habit number three, bad beginner mistake number three. This is one that uh, is kind of a sneaky one. Repeating an exercise too quickly. So what do I mean by this? Maybe you're working on doubles fundamentals. So when we're playing a double stroke roll, we need to have that two for the price of one rebound. That right there, where we drop the stick, it naturally bounces. Because eventually we wanna go back and forth with that. Hand to hand, this is a true, very slow double stroke roll. There's more lessons in depth about this here on the channel if you wanna check it out. But you can start with this and then gradually go faster. And from there you can scale in tempo. If you start this way, those are really singles technically. And those are only gonna scale so fast before, before you just fizzle out and you can't go any faster. So when you're practicing your slow doubles, you wanna master this. So what I mean by repeating an exercise too quickly, I've had students do this where I'm, I'm watching them do this and they're like, and I'm like, whoa, hold on, wait a second. Our goal here is to go as slow as we can and make sure we're really paying attention to that bounce. So rather than repeating this over and over again like this, even if we're trying to have a slow bounce here, Instead of that haphazard uh, uh, and anxiety inducing, inducing repetition, go slower. Don't be in a hurry, take your time. Let it rest and then okay, again. Okay, let it rest, again. Take your time here, allow some space in between those repetitions. Now, don't hear me wrong, repetition is key. We've gotta get in the repetition. The more repetition you log in your practicing, the more autopilot techniques and motions and patterns and things become. And that's what we need in order to play musically. That's essential. That's why playing gigs, that kind of experience of playing songs with a band, that builds that repetition, which helps you get more on autopilot and helps you become a great drummer. So as you're practicing this, yes, we need repetition. The goal is not to do it once and then get distracted and then do it again, obviously. But take your time with it. Same goes for if you're practicing the molar technique, like you're trying to do like a two stroke molar, edge top, edge top on the hi-hats. Be okay with going really slow with it. Don't try to hurry into if anything needs work. Maybe you're there, maybe you're at that level where you can do that no problem, but if you're working at this specifically, go really slow. Because when you do that, you can more easily analyze the motion that you're doing and make sure you're actually gripping well. And actually another really great example of where you don't want to repeat too quickly is if you're working on choking the rebound for ghosting. So. Long story short, if you wanna play ghost notes in the midst of a groove, you have to be able to hit the snare and then choke out the rebound so that then you can play a quiet note right after. Or maybe play a quiet note right before, spring the stick up, play a loud note. In other words, you've gotta mix dynamics really well. So a specific exercise you wanna practice a bunch is soft, loud, soft. Soft, loud, soft. That specific pattern of soft, loud, soft, 
So what you don't want to do is sit here and go, I've had students do this where they're just hammering it out and they're like, all right, I got this going, I got this going. But they're going so fast, it's getting sloppy and they're losing that dynamic precision of being as loud as they can and also as soft as they can. So don't try to repeat that pattern too quickly. Take your time and go, pause, pause. So I hope that makes sense. There's kind of a difference here between our, our mistake number one and our mistake number three. So our first one was practicing too fast. That's where you're just practicing stuff at too high of a tempo. But what we're talking about here in number three is not repeating a motion or repeating a thing too quickly. Taking your time in between. It's almost like a little bit of a mental break. Just taking a breath, breathe. So I hope that makes sense. Mistake number four, and beginners are not the only ones guilty of this not preparing for practice time. I think we've all been there. We've all been guilty of this where, you know, we're, we're excited about practicing. We're excited about playing. Hey, I got an hour this Saturday afternoon. I'm going to play my drums, but maybe we don't really think about what we're actually going to play or what we're going to practice. And so we probably, when that happens, we're probably not going to grow much. We're not going to really do anything productive in that time. We might have fun. We might have fun playing our drums, but we're probably not going to grow. If you want to grow, you have to prepare for your practice time, because otherwise you're gonna have unproductive practice, you're gonna have slow progress, you're gonna plateau, and odds are you're gonna to start to get frustrated and you might even burn out, and we definitely don't want that. If you wanna keep growing and really become more musical on the drums and reach your goals, reach your dreams, you gotta be growing in your practicing, as difficult as that can be sometimes. You've gotta do a little bit of preparing. So, some tips on how to do this, three things. Number one, write down, I want you to write this down. What are your biggest goals and dreams on the drums? So I like to think of like a dream as something really broad. Like what, what's the ultimate dream for you? Uh, do you just wanna play with a great band? Is that your dream? Fantastic. Or maybe it's, uh, you know, I wanna be able to, I'm, I'm writing some music and I wanna be able to play drums on my tracks. I've got some mics set up. I got kind of a home studio rig. I wanna be able to play on my tracks. I'm a guitar player, bass player, but I can't quite do the drum thing yet. That's my goal. So maybe that's your dream. That's your dream to be able to record well or be able to perform well. Then think of your goal, your goals as the more specific things that are required in order to achieve that dream. So maybe a goal is, uh, you know, I need my grip to be looser and I need to be able to play faster. I need that fluidity around the kit. Or maybe my foot coordination is just not coming together. I gotta work the foot coordination. Otherwise, I'm never gonna be the musical smooth kind of drummer I wanna be. So write down those goals, even if they don't feel achievable right now, even if they seem far-fetched, write them down. Then, second thing I want you to do, what are your most specific weak areas that you know need work? Now, that might line up with the goals. Maybe you're the positive thinker and your goal is, you know, I wanna be able to play this song, I wanna be able to play this kind of pattern. Or maybe, maybe you're taking the approach of, okay, my goal is to overcome this issue or overcome this issue. In that case, you're already brainstorming the weak areas. But think through what are some weak areas that you can target right now. So if you know, okay, my weak area is that my left hand, my weak hand is struggling. Let's target that. So write down that, that weak area that you know you can start focusing on right now and you can start making progress on right now. Then step three, I want you to download my guide that I told you about earlier, the six steps to session drumming guide. Because what that does is it tells you all the things you need to be practicing, all the things you need to be working on, and the order you need to work on them because you've got to have a balanced practice session where you're not only working hand technique, but you're also working coordination. You're also working listening and musicality. Those are the three pillars of drumming. You've got to be working those three things. Every great drummer has mastered those three areas. So in that guide, we're always focusing on those three areas and you can find out which phase are you in now. So what can you do now? What do you need to, what are you not able to do yet? So you can identify which phase you're in, that's gonna show you what to practice. That way you can target those weak areas, that way you can start reaching those goals and reach your dreams. The, the, the whole goal of this guide, the ultimate goal is to get you sounding like a session drummer. And generally, from, from what I've noticed, if you can sound like a session drummer, that means you can do whatever you want to on the drums, which means you're reaching your dreams, you're mastering those goals. So that's what I want you to do there so you can prepare for your practice time. Oh, that guide alone is gonna help you so much in preparing for practice time. You'll have no excuse. You'll know exactly, all right, I need to do this, I need to do this, I need to do this, I'm lacking in this area, so today I'm gonna work on this. You're gonna have some seriously productive and efficient practice sessions because you're targeting the core things that need work. So you've gotta grab that guide. Definitely download that guide. Do yourself a favor. Your future self definitely thanks you. That's gonna help you out here. All right, our final bad habit. Number five, 
focusing on learning songs and licks without working core skills. Now, don't hear me wrong on this because I'm not saying that learning songs and learning licks are necessarily bad things. I'm saying that if all you do is learn songs and learn licks without ever mastering core skills, then your playing is gonna be lacking out of balance and you're gonna find that years down the road, there are things that you're still not able to do that you feel like you ought to be able to do because you've just got these big gaping holes in your skill. We don't wanna have holes in our skill. We wanna be well-rounded, have that, again, that solid foundation that helps elevate everything. So I know that so many drummers are guilty of this and I've had so many students, um, especially not to pick on like, you know, middle school or high school kid students, but a lot of times kids learning the drums, they want to learn songs. They've got a favorite song they wanna learn and that's, that's why they're excited about their drum lesson because they wanna learn that song. Or there's a particular fill that sounds cool that they wanna learn. And so we can work on that, we can focus on that, but the thing is, a lot of times there are certain fills and songs that you're not gonna be able to play until you focus on the fundamentals. Meanwhile, if you focus on the fundamentals, that gives you the skills to play any song you wanna play as well as any lick you wanna play. So the whole idea here is just keep things in order. You've gotta have balanced practice. Make sure you're always working those fundamentals because that's gonna make the songs and the licks much more easy. So it's gonna save you tons of time in the long run. So balanced practice is the key here. That's why I keep telling you, download that guide. If you have that six steps to session drumming guide, you're gonna always know what to practice and your playing is always gonna be balanced and you're gonna be targeting these fundamental core areas that help make everything else easier. What I recommend you do is start each practice session with the fundamentals. I like to start with singles. Then alternate. And maybe move those around the kit. Something like that. Play a basic groove. Okay, is that basic beat in time? And by the way, these are things we talk about in that guide and the beginner drummer starting phase. Make sure you're nailing down those fundamentals. Those are great things to start with and just make sure you're locked in, things are sounding good, things are feeling good, and then from there you can get into the specifics, the specific things you need to work on. And then maybe the last part of your practice session can be the fun stuff. Hey, I wanna work on this song, or hey, I heard this cool fill, let's see if I can figure it out. That's what you do at the end after you've done the fundamental stuff and after you've addressed those weak areas that you wrote down in our previous step. Be doing that too, be writing down your weak areas, that way you know exactly what to work on. So hey, as we wrap up, question for you, are you guilty of any of these bad habits. No shame here, no judgment, we've all, we've all been there. My guess is that you're guilty of at least one of these. I've been guilty of all five of these. How do you think I came up with these? I would not be preaching these to you if I had not been there and dealt with these myself. Just being honest, I've dealt with these and, uh, and had to work on overcoming these bad habits. So definitely no shame, but I want you to be aware of that. Figure out, all right, which of these is my weak area. Like wh which of these bad habits am I guilty of? You can comment below if you want to, otherwise you don't have to. But then figure out, all right, what do I, what do I need to do to correct it? So say maybe, I, maybe I'm not patient in my practicing. So what do I need to do? I need to be patient in, as I'm learning a motion, not trying to repeat it too quickly. Keep the tempos slow, work on building that solid foundation. Or, you know, maybe I've been spending a lot of time learning songs, but not really focusing on my grip. There you go, you know you need to focus on your grip. Download the guide because it's gonna help you and give you the specifics you need here. Like I told you earlier, it is never too late to turn around a bad habit. And you don't need to fear failure. I'm giving you all the specifics here so that you can succeed. Even if you've been practicing things the wrong way for decades, it's okay. No time like the present to turn this around and build some good habits and practice well and practice efficiently and productively and grow even if you're busy on the drums. Even if you hardly have time to practice, you can make a lot of progress when you know the right things to practice. And that's the whole idea here. Let's know the right things to practice and the right way to practice them. And then you are poised for some serious success and some serious growth. You'll be surprised at what you can do. I believe in you, I believe you can do it. I hope you believe in you too. When you've got the right tools right there in front of you, it's amazing what you can do. Having the right tools is so important and that's my aim here on this channel and with these free e-guides I give you and with these lessons themselves to provide you with exactly what you need to succeed. So go grab the six steps to session drumming guide that's gonna help you out a bunch. My free gift to you. And thanks for joining me today. So glad you were here spending time with me. I hope this has been valuable to you. I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great week. I'll see you on the next lesson. Stay non-glamorous, know that you can do this.